Hey everybody, Victor here. Let's get started with the Nation Guide to the Knights Hospitalier. As is tradition for one province miners in this game, in 1444 you're directly bordering a much larger major nation that can absolutely wipe you out. Good news is it's the Ottomans, because they weren't aggressive at all to the people in this area of the world, right? Realistically, you're going to have to be aggressive. You have to move fast. The reason why is not only does the Ottoman want your land, and they will eventually declare on you to get it, they also want all of the land that you're going to be expanding into. There's no way around that. You're going to have to get in their face and take away their expansion paths to stand much of a chance. There's a way to do this. However, it is still RNG dependent. And basically, it's going to depend on a couple of things. One, who rivals the Ottomans. Two, who does Byzantium ally. And three, are you expanding so fast you trigger a coalition? As far as the allies, you should be good with who ends up rivaling the Ottomans. You tend to find some good, strong allies in here, at least one or two. As far as who does Byzantium ally, there's three separate option areas in there that you should be able to give a good launch pad off of. And then lastly, well, do you end up triggering a coalition? And that's going to depend on the Byzantium part. And I'll get to those individually as they come up. Moving on, though, let's talk about how to do it. First, the estates. You've seen this before. You have Monarch, Loyalty, and Prestige Generation. Not going to go into them. Then you also have these two slots here. You have Expansion as Zealotry, and then you have the one I didn't take, Enforced Unity of Faith. You can take Enforced Unity of Faith because your starting province is Orthodox. You are Catholic, meaning you can try and convert this. However, even with that plus one to Missionary Strength, if you notice, you still can't do it. The reason why is because, well, it's Orthodox, and it's not an accepted culture. Here's the problem. You can just accept Greek culture for 100 Diplo. Or you can try and do this decision down here. It's also 100 Diplo. It takes two stability and it costs you one, but it gives you permanently 5% more manpower and then some garrison benefits. Which you choose, completely up to you. I would highly recommend doing it this way, the decision. It's a stronger benefit, but early game, you might not care. But realistically, don't bother taking Enforced Unity of Faith until you can at least get the Greek culture accepted. Until then, you can't convert any of this anyway. However, the expansion of Zeltra is going to bring me into the other point about that, which is you need to determine what your religion is going to be early. So you can be whatever you want. You can be Orthodox, you can be Sunni, you can be Catholic. It doesn't really matter. If you stay Catholic, you can go ahead and you can take expansion of Zeltra now. Why not? You're going to be expanding into Orthodox lands, which you'll get the, the morale benefit from, and then you're going to be expanding into Sunni lands, where you get the morale benefit from. It's not going to be until about the age of absolutism, or at least the Reformation age, where you're going into Catholic land, and by then, a lot of them are going to be Protestant anyway, meaning that this is in a great time for expansion zealotry. However, if you go Orthodox, obviously, that's not going to benefit you early. If you go Sunni, it's not going to benefit you after that meaning that you need to decide now what you're going to be. There is, however, one other thing I need to talk about, though. That's if, if you stay Catholic, you have another thing you can benefit from. That is Jerusalem, which is probably most likely why you're playing Knights in the first place. If you're actually going to play as Jerusalem and continue your game after that point, they have a specific government type which gives you the Deus Volt CB on any neighbor that is not your religion, any heretic or heathen. However, you must be Catholic for it to work. So if you want to stay Catholic for that, then you have to. Otherwise, pick your religion, go for it, and determine your expansion zealotry based off of whatever your choice is. Doesn't really matter. You guys pick your card, go for it. Let's move on, though, to the army and what you do with that. Hire two infantry and then make your ruler into a general. Doesn't really matter if he's good or bad. It really doesn't. Because at the end of the day, he's garbage. He is absolute garbage. This is completely random. He can be tech reduction, he can be discipline, he can be morale, it doesn't matter. But if you look at his stats, he is garbage. You need him off the throne. The only thing that's going to be useful for that is his age. Because if you notice, there's something missing here. You're a theocracy, meaning you can't abdicate, you can't disinherit. You will get an heir immediately and automatically every time somebody rises to the throne but you can only get rid of them if they die. Meaning you're going to be making them into generals all the time. Check what they are, 
make sure they're not a great ruler. If they're not, make them into a general. You will not lose stability if they die unless they die in combat or on a siege. As far as focuses, don't pick one until you know what your error is going to be because if you end up getting a 116 or a 166, you know where you're putting that and it's not military. Other than that, you don't need to worry about any of that. But that's the army. As far as the navy is concerned, consolidate it and send it up here into the Gulf of Varna. That is the range of your raiding into the north. Because you're going to raid down in this area and then loop back around to here. All of these prov all these sea tiles you can end up raiding in. It'll give you about 350 ducats. As far as your diet mission, by the way, if you have the Papal State one, take it. It is an extremely easy one for you to do and doesn't take any amount of time. I'll explain why once the monthly tick happens. Now, let's talk about your expansion. As far as where you're expanding, obviously it's going to be Byzantium. It's almost always going to be Byzantium whenever you're in this region, because why not? Why wouldn't you take Constantinople out of the Ottoman hands? But on top of that, you're going to need to make this merchant and send him to hostile trading. This will give you a 25% speed bonus in getting your spy network up against Byzantium. Unfortunately, you cannot rival him as well to give you another bonus, but it's good enough as it is. Lastly, you have another merchant here. Send him into Ragusa. Doesn't really matter if it's collect or transfer because you don't have anything there, but just send him. The reason why is you're going to end up making it established communities and you're going to be improving relations with Hungary. The reason why is either Hungary will help you, which is always better, or you'll at least make sure they don't join a coalition. Because of anybody that can join a coalition, Hungary is the most annoying one. Now that you've done that, you're looking for allies. Now your allies are going to be very few and far in between. Sometimes, I mean very, very rarely, you'll find Epirus in here. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like this time. If Epirus will ally you, that's great. They'll come in on promise of land against Byzantium. Usually. In this case, they did not. So what your allies you're going for is Venice. Now Venice here can either be plus 20 or not, and there are reasons to ally you, because you are being threatened by their rival. In this case, Byzantium. Because yes, you are so weak, Byzantium is threatening you. Great start, right? Or it could be the Ottomans, or really, those two options. In this case, they're close because of Byzantium. They're not quite close enough, but go ahead, find one of their rivals here, it doesn't really matter who, and send him a scornful insult. Just to get yourself a little bit more opinion with the Ven Venetians to try and get them to ally you. At that point, it is time to unpause. And there we go. We are now one day later, and I can get to pick what my heir is going to be. As I said before, go ahead and pick the one where the clergy are going to be mad. The reason why is the clergy will be happy here. So you're going to drop it down and then bounce it back up. In this case, if you can tell, it's the same one with money, which is really convenient because at the monthly tick, oh, as I said before, if he's hot garbage too, he is absolutely a general too. Oh, looks like he's even better. Perfect. The reason why you wait the monthly tick is because this click down here is dependent on what your income here is. It's based off of your yearly income. Does not take into account expenses. Meaning that by clicking this button, depending on how much your income is, it'll go higher and higher and higher. You haven't expanded yet, and you've even given away crowd land, dropping your tax income. Meaning now, instead of this costing about 12 and a half, it costs about nine and three quarters. So you're saving a couple of ducats. This will spike your opinion with the Pope, or the Pope opinion, Papal opinion of you, and all of a sudden, even if you didn't scornfully insult them, they're at 100, completing this mission, month two. And there we go. Now as far as the money, you only got not only got the money from the merchant, but you can also go through here and raid. At this point, just start improving relations with Hungary, and wait for your claim. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording while I do that. I'll see you guys in just a minute. And welcome back. So as you can see, I have the claim down. I'm ready to go. I got somewhat lucky. See, Byzantium allied Herzegovina. This happens maybe 10 to 20% of the time. They can also ally Serbia, Albania, or Wallachia. Here's the thing. If they ally Serbia, it's fine. You can still get around that. 
If they ally Wallachia, that's probably the worst of those options, but it's still not a problem. In the case of Herzegovina, go ahead and co-belligerate them. Doesn't matter. In any case, you're going to be bringing in Venice on promise of land. If it's Serbia, you co-belligerate Serbia as well, because that'll bring in Bosnia, and you co-belligerate them as well, because they don't have any other allies. Wallachia, don't bother. There's nothing you can really do with Wallachia other than having Wallachia as a vassal, and that really doesn't help you. They're never going to be loyal. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and declare. And effectively what you're trying to do is get yourself either a vassal or land up here. The reason why Herzegovina is the best option, however, is they are an orthodox country. But if you look at the religious map mode, they own a Catholic province, and there is an event... For if you are at war with an enemy country, sorry about that, as I was saying, there is an event where if you are fighting somebody of another religion and they are holding a province of yours. So in this case, I'm Catholic, I'm fighting an Orthodox country that owns a Catholic province. There's an event where I will get a core on that province. If I am fortunate enough to have that event fire, I don't even need to take Herzegovina as a vassal. I can simply grab my core and grab the other province. This only works if it's Herzegovina. That's why they're the best option. If it's Serbia, what you do is you vassalize Bosnia. And that will give you the coring range to core these three provinces and then these four, which, yes, includes a gold mine. If it's Albania, you vassalize them and then you do the exact same thing. You take out this land and then this land and then you try and get as much of this as you can. That's it. So I'm going to go ahead and fight this fight. So I can then show you the steps afterwards. If I'm lucky, I get that event. If I'm not lucky, okay. But either way, I'm going to continue forward. See you guys soon. Oh, before I continue, I wanted to point out, wait until the Venetian navy gets into the Aegean. At the end of the day, Byzantium does have enough of a navy, especially with Athens, to sink yours. So until their navy comes down to help, you're kind of in a pickle. So just be aware of that. See you soon. And welcome back. So during that war, I was not able to get the event, so I'm going to have to vassalize Herzegovina. And during that time, once Hungary is above 100, or approximately around that, focus your sh shift your focus from preventing Hungary from joining a coalition into finding people that will ally you to protect you or help you against the Ottomans. In this case, I have Lithuania, Austria, Aragon, and Hungary as possible options here. Lithuania did not fall under Poland, meaning that there's still a completely viable option here to end up joining me, and as you can tell, I'm still threatened by the Ottomans. The rest of them will also qualify. So improve relations with Austria, Lithuania, Poland, Aragon, anybody you can, anybody you need to. However, the preferences are Austria and Poland more than Hungary, Lithuania, or Aragon because of the PU reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this out to get Herzegovina on my side. And there we go. And yes, they're going to be disloyal for now. As far as Byzantium, you promise land to Venice. I would recommend honoring that promise to Venice. And if you give them Athens, that will help end up giving you more trust with uh, losing as little trust as possible. If you don't, usually they're going to hit that 10. They'll still remain allied to you, but remember, it's not just that. You promise them land, meaning that if you don't give this to them, they're going to be mad. Whatever you happen to do, try and set yourself up where you're going to be black flagged, because you need to walk now up to Herzegovina, or if you have the ability to just simply walk there, walk there. In my case, I don't have that, so I'm going to do it this way. I obviously cannot vassalize Byzantium because they got declared on. And I can't be dragged into that yet. So I'm going to do this. I now own all the land. And I can now walk up to Herzegovina. Who themselves have claims that I can now push on Bosnia. Which then I can use to get Bosnia and then Serbia. And own both of them. Because these guys will give me coring range in this area. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. As far as these two, I'm not going to core them. I'm going to end up re-releasing them as a vassal. But now I can actually set rivals. So I'm going to go ahead and do that before I do anything else. And then give strong duchies 
once I actually release them. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording again because now I need to take out these guys here. And as of before, when you go to peace out, make sure you're not going to get a coalition, improve relations, do all of that, and then increase your relations with Lithuania and Austria during these fights. Because having them as allies will make this a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it and see you guys in just a few minutes. And welcome back. So, wars proceeding. I was able to get Serbia now to the point of wanting to peace out, and I'm going to do this now because, well, Bosnia and Serbia decided to stack their armies together. So, yeah, of course I'm going to do that. That just seems fun. <laughs> and now I'm going to go ahead and just peace out Bosnia here. The advantage of doing this separately is, of course, then you can tell what your aggressive expansion is going to look like at the end of it. As you can see, Hungary's already close. When I take out Bosnia, they're going to kick over the line. That's why you got to make sure they're going to be nice to you. Wallachia is definitely going to be there. Albania is probably going to be there. So just keep an eye on it. So I'll see you guys in just a few minutes. And welcome back. So war is completely done. And if I go in here to piece them out, I just need to wait. As you can see, I'm going to have a slight coalition. Again, this is because I made Hungary like me so much that any aggressive expansion they're getting is still not going to kick them in. And I'm going to take all their money. Because of course I'm going to take all their money. And I was able to get Austria to like me enough at this point where they will ally me, making any coalition that could have fired not going to fire. And then I'm going to simply wait until I'm able to get everything cored, Get Lithuania as my ally, which will still ally me even though I'm at war because I'm not the I'm not the main person, and I'm good. The nice thing about being in this war, by the way, if you can have Austria or somebody else who's mid-war jump in, is because well, you're able to then use their troops to destroy your rebels. So it's always a nice thing to have. So again, I'm going to have to pause it because this is going to be a while because I have to core everything up, which is going to take a bit. But at this point, you are effectively building allies, stabilizing, and getting ready to attack the Ottomans yourself. Because you've expanded all you need to. As far as the Byzantines, be aware, you can get Byzantine rebels down in your capital. They should not be able to end up taking your capital from you. They should not be above nine. If they fire, just let them sit there. It does not matter. So, I will see you guys in a few minutes. Oh, and be sure that you end up improving relations with your vassals, because otherwise, they're going to be a little disloyal. Strong duchies are not, so just be aware of that. See you soon. And welcome back. So, I have consolidated a little bit, have Austria as an ally, who also has Hungary as a PU, and I have Lithuania as an ally, Ottomans are being attack, uh, attacked, Albania, which are now, you know, dealing with the normal Skanderbag problems, and Venice is attacking them and defending Albania. However, now I'm able to jump in as well. If you are fortunate and you can jump in like this, go for it. As you can see, I'm going to outnumber them by a lot. Which, with any luck, means I will win this by a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and fight this. Now, during this time, you're obviously going to still be coring things. You're still going to have vassals that might be annoying. Remember this. Vassals won't help you unless it's in their interest to. Meaning, since, for example, Herzegovina here had claims on this land, they actually sieged it down for me, even though they were disloyal, because they thought I was giving them the land. By declaring this, even Byzantium, who is disloyal, should still run out here to try and help. So expect that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it again, show you the end result, and I'll see you guys in a few seconds. And welcome back. So it was a quick smash and grab. Now the idea here is not to cripple them completely, but if you notice, giving Austria what they need for them to be happy, because I promised them land, same with Lithuania, but I'm taking Galibalu, obviously. Now I control the strait. It's mine. They can't move through it without my permission. All I need to do is core stuff up. And once I am ready, and that means once Venice, Austria, and Lithuania are all off of their truces with the Ottomans, since 
All of them don't like them. Either they're rivaled to them, they want land off of them, whatever it happens to be. I'm able to run in with Venice, dominate the straight, and then with these two, pummel anything they might have actually brought over. Meaning the Ottomans have no chance anymore. They're done. They absolutely cannot survive here. Because this one province is now mine. And that's all you really need to do as the, as the knights. Once you have the straight and you have Venice as an ally in particular, it's over. You just need a good basis up here. And if you noticed, my vassals are now loyal. The fact is I was able to increase my opinion with Herzegovina enough to make them loyal. Barely. But Byzantium is now loyal because I gave them their land back. So they're happy for now. Hopefully this is enough to get you guys off the ground as the knights. But I wanted to show you something, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up a time lapse of one of the trial runs I had of doing this, and show you just how far it can go if you choose to do this, because this is simply the first 20-ish years. See you in a second. But hopefully this helps you guys out in your guys' games. If you guys like this kind of content, like and subscribe. I will definitely be making more of it. If you have a particular country you're having problems with or a mechanic that you want me to go over, let me know in the comment below. I'd be more than happy to make it. But thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day.